Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to take a look at two incredibly unique special Stephen King editions from Cemetery Dance. I'm talking about Secretary of Dreams Volume 1 and Volume 2. These books are so big that I have to put the camera over there so that I can um, hold them up and show them off. Uh, these are a little bit off the beaten path in terms of Stephen King. Um, if you're familiar with the titles in his bibliography, Skeleton Crew, It, Thinner, uh, Night Shift, Nightmares and Dreamscapes, stuff like that, um, Secretary of Dreams may or may not show up on those lists because it truly is um, a unique edition. So what these are, Secretary of Dreams Volume 1 and Volume 2 are both compilations of Stephen King's stories um, illustrated, either printed in text format and profusely illustrated throughout by Glenn Chadbourne, or um, imagined in the sort of graphic novel format by Glenn Chadbourne. And when I say these books are big, they are big. For comparison, I will. This is against a standard trade hardcover edition. So if this is, I don't know, nine by eleven, nine by twelve, something like that. They are big, beautiful books, and they come in slip cases. This is the, these are the baseline gift editions. Um, they, both volume one and volume two, um, have the same specs in terms of print run. They also have the same specs in terms of price, which is really cool because volume one came out in 2006 and volume two came out four years later in 2010. Um, they were both released in 52 lettered copies signed by Stephen King and Glenn Chadbourne um, and tray cased and numbered copies, 750 numbered copies, also tray cased, also signed by Stephen King and Glenn Chadbourne. And then these gift editions um, were released in print runs of 5,000 and they are slip cased. They're not signed by anybody, but... Um, List price was, like I said, $75. So pretty good deal for a big and unique book. So starting with volume one, there's the front cover, the spine, and the back cover. Volume two, front cover, spine, and back cover. And if you watched my video about Skeleton Crew, you know that I have strong nightmares associations from my childhood with the monkey with the symbols on the cover of Skeleton Crew. Well, the monkey is also featured on the cover of Secretary of Dreams Volume 2 because the story of the monkey is featured inside the book. It is a creepy good time, let me tell you. Um, underneath, so, Cemetery Dance, often, um, underneath the dust jackets, the boards are handsome, but not heavily adorned. Um, the printing is impressed, embossed, um, embossed, impressed into the cover, so it's a nice effect. You can feel it almost like letterpress, and so that's volume one, and... Volume 2 is the same way, except that it uses a purple color scheme, which is kind of cool. Um, these two books, even though they cost the same amount when they came out, and they were both released in 5,000 copies, I think what must have happened, what I speculate happened, is that Volume 1 sort of slid under the radar, and it sold out, and people got word of it, they weren't um, maybe aware that it was available, and then volume two came out, and 
more people were ready and they, they jumped at it, and but they only got volume two, they didn't get volume one, because it was too late by then, it was already sold out. Um, for whatever reason, volume two today, you can pick up for quite a bit cheaper than volume one. Volume one is the rarer of the two, but they are both really unique and really lovely and well worth seeking out. So inside volume one, kind of a fall colored um, end papers. There's the title page. Inside the front cover, or inside on the title page, it says first edition, and there's a number line that includes the number one. Um, Cemetery Dance usually, for stuff like this, just does uh, sort of a one and done, you know, where this is what we're releasing and we'll never do this again, so get it while you can, get it while it's available. So I think it's unique that it includes the language first edition and a full number line, um, because I, I certainly don't think that they've ever gone back and done further printings of these, which is nice as a collector. It's nice to have that sort of exclusivity. But in volume one, there are six stories represented, six unique um, and really cool stories. Glenn Chadbourne has his fans and he has his detractors. His style is really, really interesting. He does pen, um, predominantly pen and ink, and his style is texturing, cross-hatching, um, shadowing is really busy and I think um, really detailed. And some of the criticism that I hear about Glenn Chadbourne is that his work can come across kind of muddy. Like for instance, in the PS Publishing edition of Cujo, which is like half as big as this, um, sometimes some of his artwork doesn't come across so well because that book is so much smaller um, in physical stature. But Secretary of Dreams, both volumes are just lovely and the large size does wonders for presenting Chad Bourne's work really well. You can really, I mean, just get lost in these stories. So, so for instance, Home Delivery, it is, it has text elements, and of course the text is quite large and has plenty of room to breathe in such a large book, and it is supplemented by um, illustrations throughout. I mean, profusely illustrated. So the stories either take that format, and if you can see, you can kind of see striping on the side, and that's sort of how you can denote um, where the stories are within the book and what, which story will take which format. So after, after home delivery, Another illustration. We come to the road virus heads north. And then the stories that are presented like this are presented like a graphic novel format. So the text of the story is broken up and it is spread throughout the panels, and each panel is profusely, individually illustrated. And some of these um, almost start to suffer from that that muddiness that some people complain about with Chadbourne because the works are presented so much smaller rather than whole page. But I think as far as books I've seen that feature Glenn Chadbourne's work, um, these still come across really well. Here's another example of the artwork. Very vivid. After Road Virus, we come to 
Jerusalem's Lot, which um, was in Night Shift and is sort of a prequel to Salem's Lot and written in the form of diary entries. And again, this is another pages of text uh, complemented by full page um, illustrations. And these come across really well. So then after Jerusalem's Lot, I mean, that's a two page spread for one illustration in this giant book. And you really, I mean, you could just get lost in the texture. I have no idea how long it took Glenn Chiborn to create the artwork for this, but if it's any indication, I'm sure he was doing plenty of things in the interim, but if it's any indication, I mean, it took four years between volume one and volume two. Unfortunately, there has not yet been a volume three, but after Jerusalem's Lot, come to Rainy Season, which is another, another graphic novel style presentation. And then The Reach. The Reach. Another text and full page or partial page illustrations presentation. Such a cool story. And then finally in volume one the creepy awesomeness of Uncle Otto's truck. It is another um, sort of graphic presentation. This one has fewer panes and the text is more blocky like you can see there. This one almost looks like it was cut. I mean, it's it's effective. It sounds cheap, but it looks like it was almost cut. Pages were cut out of a paperback and then chopped up and placed in blank spots on the illustrations. Um, that doesn't sound very flattering or complimentary, but it actually works out really well. Another example. I mean, every single page of these books is full of artwork and it's just fascinating. I know that these are more maybe um, curio pieces so they don't necessarily get the same attention of the limited editions of the traditional standalone titles but they are lovely unique editions. Cemetery Dance has another graphic um, representation uh, volume that's coming out that includes um, it includes multiple authors including Stephen King and I think that one's called Seasons of Terror and it's still available from their website so I'm I've had that ordered for a while I'm really looking forward to seeing how that turns out even though it's not just Stephen King represented so volume two the purple volume it's laid out basically the same way. Six new, six additional stories represented. One for the road, the monkey, gray matter in the death room, strawberry spring and Nona in the death room, I think is a really interesting choice because it's, um, that one is from everything's eventual, I believe, which would have been really, um, recent and, contemporary well I'm trying to look at look at my shelves and try to gauge when everything's eventual would have come out but it's fairly contemporary to volume two whereas other stories like the monkey strawberry spring were much older from the 70s and 80s um, but again stories are divided equally between more graphic novel representations. There's one for the road. Jerry, Jerry, is that you? Brilliant, creepy stuff. I 
just love it. So rep split between um, those graphic novel type presentations and the monkey, um, sort of the text on one page, illustrations on the other. I mean, if you thought the monkey was disturbing and creepy on the cover of Skeleton Crew, just look at it in Secretary of Dreams. I love it. This one alternates between the typical Glenn Chadbourne, um, super busy pen and ink style and a different style of artwork that's a little bit softer. It's nice to see a range and diversity of style from Glenn Chadbourne. I think it works out really well. It just, it adds a little diversity to the presentation, which is always welcome. So after the monkey, gray matter. Well, there's the final image of the monkey and then the introductory image for gray matter featuring the infamous Paul Bunyan statue in Bangor, Maine. Gray Matter is another graphic novel style presentation. In the Death Room, the one from Everything's Eventual. It's another text on one side, illustrations on the other, and again, this one is um, features a slightly different, softer, still very distinctly Glenn Chadbourne Chadbornian, uh, Glenn Chadbornian style, but it's, it's a little bit different than what what I'm used to from him, which is pretty cool. Almost like watercolor in shades of gray, 50 shades of gray watercolor paint, maybe. These were probably, I don't know. I don't know anything about illustration, but these look like they were they look like stills from an old movie, which is pretty cool. I would venture to guess that they were initially maybe created in color and then were scanned in black and white or scanned into black and white before they ended up in the book, but I might be totally wrong about that. I mean, Glenn Chadwarn's artwork is not very subtle sometimes, but it suits the content of the story as well. In Strawberry Spring, the excellent and creepy story from Night Shift. This one has, it features a lot of illustration. Um, some of them are, you know, the, the text takes up a lot of the page and almost at the expense of the perf profusion, profusity of illustration. But this one really prioritizes the illustration, which is really cool. And then finally, Nona, another artwork on one side, text on the other. There are pages that are nothing but text, but Anyway, these are really, really cool and unique items. If I had the time and the inclination and it wouldn't like blow up all the storage in my phone and I thought that you would have the patience to sit while I almost like a slideshow style of my vacation showed you every image in the book, in these books, I would because they are all really cool and worth worth pondering and studying. Really do like Glenn Chadbourne's style. I think Stephen King does too. I think he's hired Glenn Chadbourne to do his family Christmas cards and stuff like that in the past. And Glenn Chadbourne gets kind of a bad rap sometimes because he will do like remarks, which is R-E-M-A-R-Q-U-E which was a word I was absolutely not familiar with before I became 
well, before I became conversant in this whole collecting um, mania. But Glenn Chadbourne gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes because he will do remarks for hire basically in any any book. Um, and generally speaking, for collectors, a remark is a really worthwhile and valuable thing to have, but only if it's done by the original artist who was associated with the book. So like the remark that I have in my PS Publishing copy of Carrie is perfect because it's done by Glenn Chadborn and Glenn Chadborn was the author or the illustrator in that book. So it, it makes perfect sense. It doesn't break any cardinal collecting rules, but if you get a a first trade edition of Duma Key, for instance, Glenn Chadbourne had nothing to do with the artwork in that book, but there are places that you can go where you can spend 150 bucks on a like a 10 or 15 dollar first edition book with a Glenn Chadbourne remark in the book. Now his work, it's not bad. I mean, it looks cool if you really, really like the story and you just want to have a little something extra for your favorite one that pushes it over the top to each his own. But when it comes to rare and valuable books, um, when it comes to remarks, you wanna look for work done by the original author, um, works done by someone other than the original author can actually detract from the value of the book. But anyway, I, I don't know how I got off on that tangent. Quite a bit off topic. But anyway, Secretary of Dreams, Volume 1 and Volume 2, are a showcase, an extravaganza for Glenn Chadbourne art. And his art comes across really well in these books. And if you are looking for, if you're a collector and you're looking for something unique and you're looking for something that um, is a good investment, I think Secretary of Dreams is a great, a great road to go down because unlike a lot of books, I mean, you get the book, it may have 10, 12 illustrations inside. PS Publishing usually has a, a couple of dozen, um, but you know they're they're interior illustrations, and it's it's mostly about the book, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but the Secretary of Dreams is just a bit of a a unique beast, in that it is sort of the point of these books is the artwork, coupled with the text. But picking a selection of short stories, and letting Glenn Chadbourne sort of sort of go wild and expand them out with just page after page of vivid, visceral, creepy, fascinating artwork. Um, these are not just great investments financially, um, monetarily. They are, you know, great investments in terms of actually having a book that rewards pouring over and looking through for hours and hours. Um, I'm, you know, as... A debate about whether a person should read their limited edition books and I generally um, I'll either listen to the audiobook or I'll read the trade hardcover or a paperback or something but if I have a rare and collectible book I don't sub subject it to all the wear and tear of actually reading it um, and usually you know if I don't buy a book unless I've I don't invest in a book like that unless I've already read it and I, I know I love it. Um, luckily, or unluckily, depending on how you look at it, I love pretty much everything that Stephen King has ever put out. But point being, I look through the books, I check out the boards and the way it's designed, and I ooh and I awe over it, and I take, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, and I look through it, and then I put it back in its case, and I put it up on the shelf, and, um, you know, may not take it down and look at it again uh, very often after that. But Secretary of Dreams, I mean, every single page includes so much detail, and it's so fascinating, and it just draws you in, and 
as far as the various um, the various volumes, the various books that have been released that feature Glenn Chadbourne's artwork, if you're at all a fan, Secretary of Dreams um, is an absolute brilliant showcase for his art. And like I said, volume one, uh, for some reason, as, as long as I've been paying attention, has always trended um, a little costlier, quite a bit costlier than volume two, but it's not like volume one is just head and shoulders the better book or the more desirable one because it's like it's amazing and volume two kind of sucks. I mean they stand shoulder to shoulder. They're formatted the same way. They each have six stories um, that alternate between the text and full page illustrations versus the graphic novel format. So I think volume two I don't know where the value is um, at this particular moment in time, but last time I, I looked, it was still um, quite a bit cheaper than volume one. So you can't go wrong with either book. And I get that if you, if you get volume two, it's gonna be like an itch that you desperately want to scratch to get volume one to go next to it. But volume two is a great place to start. It's, it's a classic work in its own right. And I know that these are known to collectors, but I thought that this um, may be something that was a little bit less known um, to collectors just starting out or, um, you know, average folks who just really like Stephen King and, you know, might be interested in this, but haven't, haven't swallowed the Kool-Aid, uh, so to speak, and just given themselves over to the mania of Stephen King collecting. But anyway, thank you for thank you for your time and I hope that this has been interesting and useful and I will talk to you later. Bye.